If you are interested in cryonics, you probably heard the name Robert Ettinger, also known as the father of cryonics. He is widely known in the field due to his work in the 60s and 70s that started the cryonics movement and made the concept of cryonics come to reality. He was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1918 and attained master's degrees in physics and mathematics. He worked at both Wayne State University and Highland Park Community College. So how did he go from that normal life to theorizing something as life-changing as cryonics? There were two main triggers. First, at the age of 12, he read a story named The Jameson Satellite, where an individual's body is sent into orbit with the hopes of keeping it preserved with the extremely low temperatures of space. This story was the first instance where Ettinger discovered the concept of longevity in cryonics. He fought in Germany in World War II and got seriously injured which forced him to stay hospitalized for a long period of time, during which he educated himself on his concept of cryonics. He especially focused on the work of Jean Rostand, a French biologist who had worked on low temperatures and biological systems. With the inspiration he got from the Jameson satellite and his interest during his hospitalization, he started his research with scientific material. As a result, in 1962, he finished his book, The Prospect of Immortality, which was published in 1964. The book was an instant success and led to Ettinger attaining some fame. He was invited to radio and TV programs where he backed his vision with scientific evidence and made cryonics a consideration for many. Fun fact! Ettinger was not the first person to write about cryonics. Evan Cooper published his book on cryonics called Immortality Physically, Scientifically Now, the same year Ettinger published The Prospect of Immortality, though he didn't get the attention Ettinger got for his book. After the publication of his book, Ettinger was involved in the foundation of the Cryonic Society of Michigan, which was then renamed to the Immortalist Society. Formation of this society led to Ettinger and three other individuals forming the Cryonics Institute in 1976, where Ettinger himself is currently in cryopreservation among over a hundred other individuals. Ettinger worked on his concept of cryonics throughout his adult life, which further developed the cryonics movement and the groundwork we have now, resulting in additional leaders and organizations in the field. Ettinger's first patient was his mother, who died one year after CI's foundation at the age of 78. Both his first wife, Elaine, who died in 1987, and second wife, May, who died in 2000, were cryopreserved and are now stored at Chronics Institute. One can only wonder what's going to happen if they both get revived in the future. After 40 years of cryonics activism and research, Ettinger retired from his position of group member at CI in 2003 and died in 2011 from respiratory failure at the age of 92, after which he was cryopreserved as the 106th case of Cryonics Institute. We are very grateful to Ettinger for starting this movement 60 years ago. In the meantime, many things have changed and procedures have improved. If you want to see some more ups and downs of cryonics history, subscribe and be on the lookout for our second video.